just blew my mind. Anyway, so now we're going to start the show. Basically, guys, this, if you've never been here before, basically what I'm doing in these first few episodes is I'm just talking with the teams and players that are attending ESCA land, and I'm kind of really just giving you a more in-depth view of these teams. I mean, you guys hear about these teams so much on, um, on like different websites, mostly about tournament results, right, or roster changes and stuff like that. But this is designed to give you the history and really, like, when you watch this VOD, you will know about this team and these players. So that's really what I'm trying to accomplish here. And it worked really well with Sean. But now it's going to be with the Drain for My By Power. So first of all, you want to introduce yourself. I'm sure most people already know who you are, but if you want to introduce yourself, go for it. Uh, yeah, my name is Eric Hogue, uh, alias Adren. I play for Team I by Power. Uh, right now, I'm just, I'm actually, we switched it up a little bit. I'm half op and half just a rifler, so my role is a little bit different than it yeah, usually we're gonna, is. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, actually. Yeah. Uh, that's actually how this show is going to kick off, in all honesty. So, you haven't seen any of this before. Like, I showed Sean the questions before. You seemed like you just wanted to YOLO it, like you didn't care. I would have showed you. What? But the questions I'm going to ask and stuff like that. So, you you don't know what you're in for, basically. No, I don't. Okay. Um, basically, the way I wanted to start this off is just the history of you as a player and the history of your team, right? Because you, Anger, and AZK have been together forever, basically, yep. almost. So, while I don't want this show to focus on – uh, source, I want to focus on CSGO. I feel like I have to premise this because it makes sense for the story I'm trying to tell here. So basically, you're going to have to help me with this because my memory is a bit foggy, but dynamic CSS, right? So clearly the best team in North American Counter-Strike Source post-CGS era, right? Yes. So the f last two to three years of Source's term as an eSport, you guys were it in North America by far. So I think you attended nine ESEA lands as Dynamic Counter Strike Source. Season uh, four was I mean, yeah, the first I one. All of them. Uh, season four was the first one, and then season twelve was the last one. So I assume it's nine. And I, you won eight yeah. if I'm not mistaken, because yeah, you lost one. Nine. Yep. You lost one to Torque, which was Steel's team with like TCK and Neil and Ryan from Zomblers, yep. and I can't remember who their fifth was at that event, but. Rough. Frost, you're right. It was Frost, TCK, Monty, Steel, and Ryan. And yep. then they formed into Check 6 afterwards or beforehand for ESWC 2011. They beat you there as well, with, mm -hmm. but with Dazed. Yes. Um, which is funny because now he's your teammate, right? So, so this is like a really cool story. So anyway, so basically the point I'm trying to make is you dominated Counter-Strike Source in North America. Out of nine ESCA lands attended, you won eight. Uh, you also won several ETS and LAN Champ events, which were kind of separate events from ESCA. And mm -hmm. you guys were just, you were, yeah, I think you played in a Ryu land as well, and Ryu did a Counter-Strike Source land, maybe. Um, it, so you guys were just it. That's the point I'm trying to make. You guys were the golden boys of Counter-Strike Source North America. Now, internationally speaking, you were still pretty damn good, right? The only team that really bested you was Very Games. You yeah, were, we, you, played, we played in two international events in Source. One in 2010, which was uh, DS Rack. And that was pretty much like the biggest event of the of the year, you know. Like all the best teams in the world for CS Source were there, and we actually got second next to Very Games. Right. Um. Then there was ESWC 2011 where you lost to Very well, Games we, and Check Six. Yeah. Right? So like, there was only ten teams at the ESWC, and the top two out of the f groups of five got out. So we got out with a uh, top two finish. And then we went to face uh, Very Games first round, so mm -hmm. they actually beat us first round. And there's no lower bracket, so like, you lose once in the upper bracket, you're done. Like, then it was just so a that point, we, Yeah. So, I mean, we lost the Very Games, and we're already pretty much, you know, fighting. We're fighting for third or fourth, and we got in fourth. Right. Because Check Six lost to that team with Angel Seacrest. does Secrets. Yeah. So that, that was pretty much – so basically let's just end source there. I don't want to talk about it for long. I just wanted to point out that you guys are dominant. But there's one more thing to point out from Counter-Strike Source going into CSGO, right? So you and AZK were the dynamic duo of Opping in North America, right? You were two of the top players in, in Source from Opping. There were other good Oppers in Source. Uh, Days was pretty good at Opping in Source. Mo, obviously. Uh, there's a bunch of names you could throw out there, but you and AZK were it. I think even at one point, 
uh, Kadred did like top ten offers in the world for Source, and you and AZK were both on the list, pretty high up. So yeah. basically, the point is, you're dominant in Source, you're dominant in offers in Source. You come to CS:GO, and AZK still ops at first when you're dynamic, but you immediately have to change roles from this dominant opper and Source to now pretty much strictly a rifler with the exception maybe like DE train you want an extra sniper we have a Dren but for the most part you're a rifler now how does this transition affect your overall transition to CSGO from like a dominant source player with an op to like oh I have to learn this new game and I have to learn a new role at the same time like how did that affect you as a player how did it affect your team coming into Go? Well, I mean, starting off in Go, we did try to double op, but we found out like very quickly like that it just doesn't work. And even at the time, you're not getting three hundred dollars for an op kill. At that time, when we're first switching over to Go, we were getting fifty dollars for an op kill. So you pretty much make no money when you're opping, and the op was broken, and <laughs> there was just so many different things that like running two ops was impossible, and we quickly learned that. So. I don't know, I was just being a team player since I was the in-game leader. I thought it made sense for me to step down from an opera role and just have AZK completely focus on opping while I focus more on, you know, the team strats and keeping everyone in check and so yeah, I mean I just made the team decision to uh you know, I thought that would be best for us for me to stop opping. All right. So, do you think that this affected your ability to still be a top player at the highest level of the game? I mean, you're you're coming from I'm like the golden boy of Soros, so to speak, in North America, yeah. to even now and, and, and then. I mean, yeah, my role is completely different. I'm not entering sites and becoming the dominant fragger, opening up sites, holding down the sites. Like, I'm more, because even on CT sides of like maps, I would just float around and I would just be everywhere with my op. And now I'm pretty much the support player on a lot of spots, or I was for most of CSGO. Like, I'm the one holding the flash and setting up Todd or AZK and they're fragging out. It's not really like, if I'm fragging, like even if I have low frags, we're still gonna run around if I set up my like fraggers properly. But yeah, the roles are completely different than what I used to be, so like, I don't so know. So do you feel the flack that you get sometimes for, cause let's be honest, this is kind of fast forwarding a bit, you had a really bad event at the last ESCA LAN. Yeah. So do you feel that it's unfair to be judging you on those statistics since you're now a different player than you used to be, or do you feel that was fair criticism? Uh, <laughs> I find it's really funny that everyone thinks I'm online or something. Like people will say, "Oh, Adren sucks at land," but you know, I don't know. I, I've had one bad land in what five years, so I can't really. You know, I, it's pretty silly. We'll get to that in a second. I don't want to fast forward too much, right? right. So then, Dynamic CS:GO kind of has a few marquee events. Um, mm -hmm. The first being an event that was really weird for you guys. I think, so the first event would be ESWC 2012 qualification in North America, right? Yeah. Because then season 12 land was after that. I'm just making sure I'm in order. So at this event, you use Freakazoid for a fifth. Volcano retired for the 80th time in his career. And yeah, you so pick up much, Freakazoid. Yeah, Volcano retired because... We plan on going internationally because if you win EWC, you always got to go to Paris. And Volcano, Sal didn't have any more vacation days, and he really couldn't dedicate, you know, like his time, and he couldn't really travel internationally. So we had to find a new fifth for Volcano, and we quickly just had to go with, uh, you know, just a new player. And we tried having the cake and eating it too with Freakazoid since he's a heavy fragger. We thought we could mold him into our team play as well, but it didn't work out. So you wind up losing that event. We don't really. You, there was only one qualification spot to come from it anyway, and Area 51 winds up being the one to get it. Yeah, well, actually, we were there, and it was supposed to be top two, and we made top two, and then after we lost the finals, they said only the top one's going. Okay. Either way, I know you didn't actually. But yeah, we didn't make the it. Paris event. So yeah, then you go it. on the season 12 ESCA land, which I already talked to Sean about this and in his episode because he was mm -hmm. there with Area 51, and this was kind of like this weird event because there's only three teams there. Curse couldn't make it, which yeah. uh, Emong broke his arm. TM quit. I don't know. It was really weird. They couldn't yeah, make it. Yeah, something weird. So, and they were the number one seed. They were 15-1 and one in record. I think I misspoke last episode, so they were 16-0. and They were 15-1. And, one. and um, so you go to this event, and 
off the so this is really weird right so you mm -hmm. cuz i this was the first land i casted so i remember it vividly right cuz this is like a huge moment for me as a commentator yeah so we're there and you have to play a source land first just like some <laughs> oh, of the yeah, area 51 one, yeah, players right. are playing 1.6 yeah. beforehand as well so you literally show up with two lineups because you had already kicked Anger off the CSGO roster. He left whatever. We'll get to that in a second. I don't want to, like, label it something, but he's not on your team for CSGO at this point in time. But then he shows up anyway to play Source with you guys strictly, and Volcano is playing as well. So it's like you have Volcano and Anger, you, AZK, and Pex. That's your Source yep. lineup. You win the event. It's your last event in Source. You win, you know, shed some tears. Immediately move your equipment across the hall to play CSGO against Area 51. Uh, or was it DTA that you played first? I think it was DTA you played DTA first. DTA we played first, yeah. So, so you, you get there, and then you immediately swap players out because you had already picked up Kiko and Swag at this point. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, what happened with Anger? Can we, are you going to shed light on that, or should we just leave it alone like it never happened? Because he temporarily, uh. you temporarily part ways is like kind of the point. And, and this was, besides this, like, this was one of the biggest North American news pieces for CS. Yeah. It was like, this happened, and then Sean Garrett's leaving, like, the 51 squad. Like, that was, like, the two biggest, like, roster changes at this point in time. And no one really got a clear answer on what the hell happened. We just know he went to curse eventually. So, I mean, there's a lot to it, really. And even now, it's kind of, like, foggy in my brain. But, I mean, there's a little bit of issues with Todd. Just within, like, I don't know. The whole team's motivation, not just Todd, but the whole team's motivation. Like we needed a like a fresh start, and we thought with Brax and Kiko that like they would bring a lot more motivation to us, to us, which we thought we were lacking a lot. Like, you know, we were barely playing, didn't want to really go on a server and strat. We thought these new kids would give us a fresh insight, and we were having you know a little bit of practice issues with Todd at the time. So I mean, we just we kind of just went all in, and the thing is, was Swag didn't want to play with us. Brax came as like a, uh, a package deal. A package deal, exactly. So he wanted to bring Kiko along, and Kiko wasn't the first pickup we wanted, but Brax was definitely what we wanted. Obviously, you can tell he's a really good player. So we decided to just me, AZK, and Pex made the decision to just you know go all in and you know try to go for it. Right on. So your lineup for this event, ESA Season 12, the first CSGO event for North America, really. Uh, you go in, you have Swag and Kiko, and it's you, AZK, and Pex. Yeah. Which Pex also struggled in his transition to CSGO, and he winds up retiring later after this event, I think. Um, the point I was going to make was, is you still got this event. This is like the this, like maybe the reality check to Dynamic that we're no longer it anymore. We're not the golden boys of Counter-Strike. You... And the reason why is the whole Area 51 loss wasn't really relevant. Like, I mean, either one of you could have won that, right? It was like the top cream of the crop 1.6 players that transition yeah. versus your source transition players. But you guys lose the DTA off the bat. Why does this happen? Is this going from source to CSGO so quickly? Was this just you weren't – I don't know. It I, was I weird. I really don't remember if it was like a warm-up stage for us because, yeah, we just got done playing the CS source finals. So, And we swatch, swapped over, switched two players in. And we just got right into it, and we just got beat. I don't know. That that really hurt us because we would have had two chances to beat Area 51, and instead we only had one chance to, you know, beat them. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what he means is the way ESCA land works, it's a, uh, it's a best of three type deal that we did. And the lower bracket team has to win two sets of three because mm -hmm. the, the, top, the upper bracket team hasn't lost yet, so they still get a second chance, so to speak, with another set. So your lower bracket team has to win two sets of three. Your upper bracket team only has to win one set of three. It's just the way the best of three double elimination bracket works. So that's what Adren's referencing to, by the way. People get confused on double elimination bracket best of three rule sets. And they're like, whoa, what? So that, that's what he's talking about. So, yeah, yeah you, you dropped a DTA. Could be anything that happened. I mean, they were a pretty hot team. Uh, they had some great players. But you guys lose at the first day, and you have to come back and repeat against Area 51 the next day, having to win two sets. Um, but it winds up not panning out. And yeah. you, you guys are also no, – like, I remember well, – yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So we, we come back the next day. We play DTA, get our revenge. We beat them like we should have beat them. And then we go to play Area 51. And I, I think it was a pretty close BO3. We actually won the first map on Inferno. Mm -hmm. And then the second map, I believe we lost. I don't remember what it was. But the third map was Dust 1, and they just absolutely destroyed us. Yeah. yeah. That, it was that like was... a – 
they just massacred us on Dust One. That was another reason why the land was really weird because we had Aztec and Dust One. Yeah, so I think if we would, I don't know. I'm not saying we would have won, but I think it would have been a lot more interesting without a Dust One in there. Right. So I remember talking to you after you lost because you guys already knew you were heading the DreamHack Winter 2012. You had already known yeah. that. And so exactly. it was. It wasn't even that much after. It was like maybe two or three weeks after the land. You guys were heading the DreamHack Winter. I don't think it was that much. Yeah. So. I just remember you guys being really down because you're about to head to this international event and you domestically didn't succeed the way you wanted exactly. to. Exactly, that's scary, yeah. But you go to DreamHack Winter. So this is DreamHack Winter 2012. This is the, well, I guess season 13 ESC Land is another international event you guys attend as Dynamic, but this is the, the only time you guys go to Europe as Dynamic for Go. And you, you go to your group and things aren't too shabby. I mean, you beat in faculty, you tie a Nexus, which at this point, team was, was pretty solid. So then the opening bracket round after this group play uh, is going to play against Vary Games. So already it's like we're reliving this Counter-Strike Source rivalry <laughs> all over again. Because Vary Games almost has the exact same roster. As yeah. I think it might have been exactly at this point. It might think. have. Yeah, I think RPK was still there. Yeah, and... so they hadn't transitioned at all yet yeah. with any other new players. And it's you well, guys. Go ahead. I think Kenny S was still with them too. Yeah, he was. Yeah, we never played him, him, him in Source with that roster. Okay. So then you go in, and it's, it's like, okay, here we go again. And you guys get 2-0'd. Um, mm -hmm. walk, walk us through this here. Can I just tell you about my dream hack luck? Yeah. My dream hack luck is so ridiculous. Like, I mean, with this roster, I would say this roster was probably our weakest roster we've ever went to internationally with in CSGO out of the three ones we went to. We actually made – this is the only roster we made it out of groups with and actually did decent against very games. But every single dream hack has been just like so bad for me. In that BO3, it was just like and just like this dream hack, I lagged out on a gun round with like 6k, and we happened to lose that gun round, and you can't replay it. So then, I mean, you lose the gun round, you lose your 6k that you had in the bank, you lose it all. So you pretty much play that round 4v5, and then you come in the next round having to save because you lost that important round and you have no money. And it just all, like, when you're playing such a good team like Very Games, like, it just crumbles. It crumbles down. So that was on Inferno. I lagged out. And they take that map. It's like 12-12. I lag out on an important gun round. It gives them, like, two or three rounds right there, and I lose all my money. So they win Inferno, and then we go on Dust. We go to Train. And we're actually doing really well on Train, like 4-1 or 4-0 on Terra side. And we lag out again. Our computer crashes again in a 2v1. And the guy that lags out has the bomb, so Pex has to TK him. And it, I don't know if he TKs him or just like, Pex had to go and fight the guy instead of planting the bomb because the guy that crashed had the bomb. And when you lag out in two of the two maps in a best of three against a team like that, it's really hard to come back. And, and that's happened to every single DreamHack I've went to. Right. I don't know what it is. I didn't remember that part. Uh, yeah, I think I remember the Inferno instance. I didn't remember the train one. But either way, so you guys are able to make it out group, but you lose an opening bracket round, but you lose to a team that I think they placed top three at the event. And then I want to position this alongside Curse, too, because basically your team is a merger of Curse and Dynamic with Dazed. Mm -hmm. So Curse doesn't even make it out of group at this event. In fact, they lose to the pro gaming TD team, the Brazilian team, that – uh, Area 51, 16 0 at ESWC yeah. 2012. So Curse was really struggling. And this is back when they had Michael 3D and uh, all those Frost. guys. Yeah. Uh, Frost and Anger and uh, Skadoodle. And I, who was their fifth? Easy Juvenile PK? or something. Ju no, I think Juvie or yeah. Easy PK or Stan. Juvie or TM, one of those two. TM, definitely not. It was maybe. It was Juvie Juvenile. Then. You're right, it's Juvenile. Because I remember everybody made fun of him for like jumping on Nuke and like falling and like killing himself or something like that mm. it was like a huge like joke so it was juvenile so scrap that now it's ESEA land season 13 now once again you've made a roster change you've brought Volcano back Pex is retired and then Kiko is gone and you pick up nothing so yep. theoretically at this point this is on paper one of your most powerful rosters uh, for dynamic at least and you go into season 13 land and um, it's, this is the, the international event. So we have very games, NIP, and faculty there. It, this is huge. 
and you guys once again immediately have to play a very game. So it's just like <laughs> you can't escape this very games team. So you, yeah, I know. So it's like three nights winter 2012. They beat you 2-0. They're beating you in stores every single time you play them. It's like you just can't seem to get them. And so lo and behold, you have a best of three against very games. This time. You do take a map. You beat them on D2. I think it was map two in the set, but they had beat you in Inferno previously, yeah. and they beat you on Mirage. And so, boom, you open up the tournament with the loss, and you're down to the lower bracket. So talk us through this bout against Vary Games. What's, what's, what's happening here? What was the first map, Inferno? Yes. And they, they beat don't... you. Oh, yeah. So some of the crucial things I remember about Inferno is that we had our two 1.6 players playing in pit. It was Brax and nothing, or mm -hmm. Swag and nothing, or our pit players. And VG was doing a source strat that, at the time, was pretty new to the go scene, but we knew it very well, like me, AZK, and Pex. Or me, AZK, and who was our fifth? Volcano. Volcano, yeah. And they really just, they started off, Very Game started off with the, it, it was called a, a hot box strat, where they smoke on top of the trucks at apartments, and they just sent three or four people out of the apps and they jump into pit and they beat us on like the first gun round the next gun round like three gun rounds in a row and we were just getting like dominated like on that strat they used this strat all tournament long and it caught yes. a, it caught nip off guard too um yeah, yeah everyone in the go scene now knows it because mm -hmm. very games took it from source and we used to run it in source even and we knew how to counter it but it just caught them off guard being new to still pretty new to go you know what i mean right and that just put us in a hole and we pretty much just had to scrape the map at that point i also remember vividly in this match i think maybe it was against quantic when nothing stabbed you in the back at mid oh was i think that, that this was that the, or was this later it had to have been the quantic match it was because i remember match. it being really close yeah and we were i think we got raped on inferno against vg yeah so then you beat him on D2, though, so you get your revenge. Um, and then was this – this is when Swag does the famous fake flashbang. Oh, on Dust2, yes. Yeah. And you win that. So that's yeah, we that crushed them on Dust2. Yeah, two. you did. You pretty much just punish them with, like, a fast A mm -hmm. every single round. So then you go on the Mirage, though. So it's 1-1, one, one, Mirage. Has Mirage always just been kind of a weak map for you and your teams? Like, since it's different from Strike, uh, which wasn't really played in stores? Oh, we definitely don't like it, that's for sure. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. Even still to this we, day? Yeah, we still don't really like it. And if you actually remember that demo, VG went uh, A 15 rounds in a row against us. Very Games did that to Nip as well. 15 rounds, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, so, they were all about 2-3 We started off pretty well. Splits. I think we might have been up 5-1 or 6-1, and I was just like auto-sniping the shit out of them. And then I kind of dropped off, and they took A on me a couple times. Mm -hmm. But... Then, it was definitely a close match. Yeah, I mean, you took a map, so it was like one of the only times you've taken a map off of Vary Games and Go, so that was huge, but mm -hmm. Mirage killed you. It's a map that I think you'll yeah. probably veto a lot. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so then we go like, to Quantic. So now it's basically we have Quantic, Curse, and you guys. Like Those are the three North American teams that we actually expect have international potential, mm -hmm. and Quantic probably being the most powerful one next to you guys. Curse was already really struggling. Yeah. Uh, so you play against Quantic marathon match, right? So it's Train and Dust Two both go to double overtime, and I think you lost to Train double overtime, really close. I mean, it was double overtime, and then yeah. you win D two on double overtime, and then you lose just outright on Inferno, like sixteen to seven. Talk us through this, because this was this was huge because it was so close for and it lasted so long. Yeah, I remember one of the maps being, like, extremely long, like, double overtime. I didn't know the first two maps. Mm -hmm. I forgot that the first two maps went into double overtime. But, yeah, I mean, it was really so close. I, I don't remember too many details about these matches, actually, besides getting knifed. Yeah, you got knifed on Inferno. <laughs> that was the 16-7 loss at the end. Oh, okay. So I, I just remember I sitting that. behind you guys, and you're, you were in Mexi Pit, and you were coming out. And nothing yeah. was just running from banana. Well, it's one of those weird things. Like, I've even done it when I'm, like, yeah. matchmaking or something. I'll just knife, and no one will be on my screen, and I will kill somebody. Yeah, so you were in Mexi Pit, so he didn't even see you while he was just coming from banana to go mid. Yeah, he was just, like, knifing. He was lurking, from banana. yeah. Yeah. And, and then you just pop up, magic moment, 
ninth in the back <laughs> dead. And yeah. uh, it was a close score at this point. You guys are on T side. And I think it was like the start of the T side. Wasn't yeah, it? Mm -hmm. like the first half was really close. It was like one of those like nine, six, eight, seven type situations. So yeah, this was actually semi huge in momentum because he obviously gets no money now. Like he's screwed. And then yeah, exactly. You, had, you, you double eco after this, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you double eco afterwards because it just ruined you guys. So yeah, that that was tough. Uh, as a commentator, it was tough to watch. Um, at the same time, it was expected in the sense that we knew that the matches would be close. Um, double overtime did the, did the, did the set justice. Uh, the only thing that didn't do justice was the Inferno map where you guys kind of got wiped, uh, which just kind of sucked. So Curse at this event, though, they actually they played in faculty first, so definitely an easier an opponent than playing very games off the bat. Yeah. They 2 0 them, but then they have to go play Nip, and they get 0 2'd by Nip, and then they get 0 2'd by Quantic. So you guys wound up placing almost yeah we were definitely them. i think i would say we them. were definitely better than curse at that yeah, point i think so too we were actually pretty strong with that roster and surprisingly enough we had we scraped all of our strats and we were just playing completely free form with that roster mm -hmm. but yeah so this is uh after this event i remember we were at a bar at the hotel this is not the the laptop story by that's the next plan. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're sitting at the bar and you're like, I'm uh -huh. done. I'm done playing. I'm over. <laughs> and at first I was like, this dude's full of it. He's going to come back and play. But I think you oh, yeah. were actually dead serious for at least two weeks. <laughs> and then all of a sudden curses lineup yeah. falls apart. So Michael 3d gets cut or whatever. Easy PK is gone. So now it's just Anger and Skadoodle and Stan. And they're like, who should we pick up? And it, I guess it's just blatantly obvious, right? It's the team that's been together on and off for five years. Uh, and they pick up you and AZK. So now we have Curse again, revamped. And this was probably honestly one of the strongest lineups Curse has ever had at this point in CSGO. And you guys are going to DreamHack Summer 2013. Right, that's that's your marquee event. Yeah, uh, that's your first international land. Anyway, you guys are dominating online already, and so this is where this trend starts. Well, it's, it started with dynamic already, kind of, but this is where this whole online versus land performance thing starts to come up when people are really starting to hate on you guys. Yeah. Um, but in all honesty, this event was really weird because you play Epsilon first. And mm -hmm. just to premise this, at this point, Epsilon is almost entirely what Fnatic is today. It's almost the exact same roster. Yeah, four of the five. Uh, the only difference is Pronax. Mm -hmm. So that's just to give you, like, at this point, they weren't as good as they probably are now, but they were still pretty damn good. They were, yeah, they took second at the event, so they were definitely like a shocker team. Not only that, but they were shocking Nip in the Swedish tournament that was taking place at the same time. They didn't mm -hmm. beat them, but they were giving them tough games. Yeah. So you beat them 16-10 on Inferno. Literally, at this point in time, Copenhagen Wolves is watching you play Epsilon on Inferno. Yeah. And then what do you have to do? You have to go play them on Inferno. So how does this – did you intend for this to happen? Hey. Oh. Uh, well, um, sorry, repeat the question. Okay, so you beat up Salon Inferno DreamHack Summer. It's your first map in the group. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just the way the vetoes went down, like, it came to, just the way the other team vetoed. Like, they vetoed all our best maps besides Inferno. So, like, we had to still cancel Mirage, and we definitely didn't want to play Mirage. Right. So we played Inferno again. And you got destroyed. Yep. We got 16 killed. 16 to 3. It was... Our T-side just got, yeah. Our T-side got murdered, and just, nothing was working. And Copenhagen was is a good team. It's not like you lost to a pushover or anything. Oh no. But they were. But yeah, no one expected you to get blown out that bad. I think people expected a closer game, especially after watching you beat Epsilon on it. Yeah. So then you you had to rematch Epsilon, and of course it's Mirage, a map that you guys had mm -hmm. probably just never ever. So yeah, yeah, in the veto system that time, they vetoed the same exact same exact maps as they did the first time, and I'm still going with the same exact maps last time. So it comes down to Inferno and Mirage again, and I'm not gonna go and travel across to Europe to play Inferno three times and get knocked out, you know what I mean? So we just had, we wanted to risk playing Mirage, even though we already, because we already played him on Inferno, 
and they watched us play Inferno against Copenhagen Wolves. So it's not like we we're gonna pick Inferno Inferno for a, a third time. So I mean, we looking had to back Inferno. on it, would you still have done what you did? Pick Mirage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to pick Mirage. Had to. Maybe what? I would have vetoed differently so that Mirage. Yeah. Inferno. I thought they were gonna. Vote, veto Inferno. That's why I didn't veto it still. Well, that makes sense. They vetoed um, Dust 2 and Train both times against me. So. So once again, you walk away from a LAN event not doing as well as you had hoped. This happens to you at Season 13 LAN. That's dynamic. This happens to you at DreamHack 2012. This is the Winter Event 2012. Um, you guys just aren't placing top three like you used to in Source, right? Things just aren't going your way. And you're not even the dominant team in North America anymore. It seems like Quantic has kind of risen to this occasion, which is now complexity for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you guys are already kind of having it rough. And then you go to Season 14 ESE LAN as Curse. And this, this is where you drop Stan and you pick up Mossbeck. Well, yeah, Stan quits. Yeah. Stan quit. And then this is like a week before the roster locks, so we kind of had to... Roll the dice. Just pick, yeah, pretty much roll the dice. And boy, could you have rolled better, right? So you pick yes. up Mossbeck, and I'm not going to, like, slam this guy. That's not the point of this interview. I could slam you just as easily, right, because you <laughs> performed just as bad. Yeah, I did. It's sad because this is actually Anger's best event ever. Like, he was on fire yeah, at this Yeah, people land. still call Anger online. Todd probably had one of the best lands he's ever had that land. Yeah. He was uh -huh. literally insane. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to repeat that yet. Um, no. Hopefully, that'll change for you guys. But, yeah, so you get a first-round buy because you you had, like, an amazing online record at this point. So yep. you, you buy that. So then you go and you play Complexity first, right? So this is, like, okay, big North American yep. rivalry, 1.6 versus Source. I did this exact same talk with, with Sean. <laughs> and um, People didn't know who was the best North America at this point. It was either you or Curse, right? And Mossbeck was amazing online for you guys yeah. and for other teams as well. So it's like, okay, this should this should be a grudge match, right? And it, you beat them. 2-0. Uh, you have an, an double overtime match on Inferno where you win it 22-20. to So I guess that could have gone either way. Yeah. Uh, Sean's explanation for this was, I don't know if you watched it, but basically he was like, we – we were getting destroyed at B was basically what he, his big point was. It seemed like your B hits were just killing them, and they weren't. They were having trouble stopping your B hit. Um, so they they wound losing to you there, and then you beat them 16-7 cash a map that most 1.6 players didn't really have prepped at that point. I don't think. Yeah. So walk us through this. How did this feel? What was going through your head? How is things going right now? I mean, at the time we were feeling pretty good because. We hadn't had much much success against that roster on LAN. If, even though with it we had a completely different roster, but still, like, the previous season we lost to Quantic, which was only two of them, actually, which was only... Who was on the team on Quantic? Was it Kiko, Semphis, Semphis and... Days, just Semphis and Kiko, that's it. And Frost. Yeah. That was Quantic. So just those two, really. But just, like... Yeah, so that LAN we lost against them, and then the previous ECA LAN we had also lost to them. So, I mean, it felt pretty good to finally beat them on LAN. But, uh, yeah, I think we were feeling pretty good. At this point, it was already obvious that you and Mospec weren't playing very well, though. Um, but the rest of your team was playing on point. Like, this is yeah. one of Anger's best events. AZK is usually pretty consistent anyway. And Scott mm -hmm. was doing well. I mean, he was opping. He was doing his job. Yeah. So, at this point, I don't know if I want to throw this guy under the bus. Should I? I found Mospec at the what? bar after this match is over. Yeah, he actually drank some beers in between our BO3. So, which was pro I told him tip. not to do and so was it you that came up to me and said that? Yes. Yeah. So I mean that's just really he, good. This I wouldn't have said shit reactions. if it was if like have one. A beer in the middle of an yeah, event, it was bad. I don't know. It wasn't even like if you're it would have just pants. been one, if it would have just been one beer, I would have been like, "Oh, whatever. He's having a beer in between sets." But it was like know. it was like 3. And was I was it? like, "Okay, you I probably was... <laughs> He was just cranking blue moons at the bar. Throwing, throwing, dude. <laughs> anyway, so you have to play Nip. So this makes it even worse. And you know what? I don't want to throw one of these bus too hard because I can understand it being your first big LAN and you having nerves yeah. and stuff like that. That's, that's obviously going to happen, and I can't even hold you for that. But 
there's the right way to go about solving those nerves, and there's a wrong way to go about it. So talk, pro, I gave a talk about it. So pro I tip, pro, pro tip for me and Adrin, don't get slaughtered Before in between play sets. Nip. Play playing <laughs> nip. So you go play nip o two, and yeah. you, actually the first map is fourteen fourteen. Yep. And it comes down really close. And me and Mosbeck are actually in a clutch for the very last round. And we both have like 2 HP. And we just communicate. I don't know if you remember this round, but mm -hmm. I think you might have an analyzed it. But what should have happened was like we were double peeking him. Wait, was it Mosbeck planted behind Mosbeck is Moto. Mosbeck is Moto. You Moto are a mid flank, I think. And I think you were positioning for some type of crossfire. But y'all didn't peak at the same time. It didn't work out. He wound up. I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead. But yeah, there was just some miscommunication. Mm -hmm. But and he just got an easy like spray down. We kind of lined up, and we both had two HP. But that match was really close. Yeah. What you're talking about is on Dust too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, th yeah, you're right. I, I was thinking of Inferno site, for some Fiflaren reason. Fiflaren in tunnels. Yeah, Fiflaren's in tunnels. Yeah. He gets on the bomb, sort of. Like, he doesn't start defusing, I don't think. And then you are... Oh, no, this is what happened. Yeah, we were supposed to we were supposed to tap the bomb. This is what happened. He was on the bomb. I was in front of Big Box. We were supposed to double peek him at the same time, just like you do at the start of the round at B. One peeks from lower, one peeks from plat. He taps the bomb, lets me peek solo, and then, then he jumps up then on the plat. he jumps up and, and gets solo. obliterated. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. What I was referring to was Inferno, where you guys get destroyed 16-3, and he did this weird thing at Moto that everybody was confused about as well. So basically, you guys get o 2 would by Nip. First of all, this it honestly wasn't even that surprising. Nip's slamming everybody at this point. Yeah, like exactly. the only The only team that has done well against them is Virtus Pro and like one other team at this point in time. Uh, so even though stupid crap happened that caused you to lose, it wasn't that major of a news story, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Dusty no, was really terms close. For just general, generally, yeah. but but as, as a team uh, and as, as a, a player, team morale, yeah, that hurt. We got thrown into the complexity match literally two minutes later, so I think we were kind of down and just just because that first map was so close and we were this close to beating Nip, that our morale was just down for the complexity match since we were just thrown in like two minutes later. Yep. But. So yeah, you had a close game against Nip, sixteen fourteen D two. We talked about the clutch that ruined it basically. And mm -hmm. then Inferno, you guys just got hammered, basically, 16-3. to three. Um, yeah. So then you go to play Complexity just a few moments later. They're coming off a pretty pretty hot streak. I mean, they had got sent to lower bracket by you guys, but they're beating all the other North American teams. So, like, your United 5-type team, your Frost Gaming, your, which is now, like, Reliable or whatever. So they're beating all these teams 2-0. They're just mm -hmm. skating through. So they're building all this momentum. So then they come to play you guys in the lower bracket finals, and they just – Slam you guys on dust. Oh, too. yeah, they start us. Yeah, this is the land. They start this is CT the map side first. Probably everyone gives me shit for it. Yep, they started yeah. CT side first. They got to pick. Now, first of all, this is unheard of. Most people pick T side first, dust too. It's one of the few maps you would want T side first almost. But they pick CT side first. Just, and, yeah. No, and no. they they just go nutty. I mean, that's really about yeah, it. Was just, yeah, pretty much that was it. Nothing was working for us. They. they guessed right like they stacked mid b when we went mid b they stacked long when we went long and just nothing was working out for us and after being down after the nip matches i just think that dust two match just put us even further in a, in a ditch so i mean it just made inferno that much harder for us you know yeah so then you go on to inferno a map that you marathon earlier on mm -hmm. I, from what sean says he made some adjustments on how they defended b and it worked out I a think lot they better just stacked b that's, that's they were it. they were cheating three over b yeah and they were just yeah, so no real like, adjustments just they stacked and guessed because i mean me as just a distract caller at the time i just went back to how we beat them before i was just like let's just do our bread and butter b hit and just see how they, they react and it was i don't three. really exactly i think we were still taking it with three people though but I can't really remember how. I don't remember that much detail about the match. I just no. remember everybody anticipating it because it was an overtime. I remember us on. at this point in the stage, you know, we're on the last map. We lost a nip. They crushed us on the first map. I remember there just being a lot of stutter stepping on our Terra side because, you know, you lose confidence. You're just going to, when you're executing on a strat, people are just like not fully committing. They're not, they're not feeling as confident as they were 
you know, the first BO3 against complexity where we just, you know, felt good. Right. So here begins, here is the trend still continuing, right? So disappointing performance at the previous ESA land, disappointing performance here. I, would, I don't, I don't want to call it super disappointing. Whoa, 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 you only whoa, whoa, played two yeah. teams. Everyone calls us having a, an online performance at this land, and it, maybe my stats, but let's see who we played. We played Complexity, we beat them. Then we played Nip, and then we played Complexity. We didn't stat pad against anyone, and we lost four out of the, the six matches we played. And we tied Complexity. It's not like Complexity beat us at that event. They just beat us the second time, not the first time. <laughs> right. Like, okay, I'm just, like, giving, like, the general, like, this is not my personal viewpoint, because I've always hyped you guys a lot. In fact, I've been accused of being super biased towards your team on several different occasions at several different events, yeah. like, still rooting for you guys, even though you guys weren't top threeing like you used to. Uh, that's just the sorcerer in me, I guess. Uh, anyway, so, basically, my point is you're not top threeing anymore like you used to in source, and people are confused, because you're, you're number one seeding online, but you're not top three mm -hmm. at the event and that's I think where the main argument comes from well yeah I guess we did we did have a really good season I think we went an undefeated, undefeated season yeah that's probably why we get a little bit of slack but we only played complexity one time during the season so I mean it's not like we're playing the land competition online right you know, we don't play nip online we're not beating nip online right so. so here's where it comes again though this is where people get this online versus land and this is when you pick up dazed and you become i by power mm -hmm. and there's the complexity 10 year anniversary tournament which you guys just absolutely murder um you 2-0 reliable which has a little bit different roster than what they have now then mm -hmm. you 2-0 complexity in the upper bracket you play them on cash first i think this is where somebody had to sub out and stan comes in on well, cash, we, we, or was that later I think we beat Complexity final? in two different BO3s in that tournament. Yes. Like we yes, played them did. in the upper bracket, beat them, mm -hmm. and then they came back and we played the finals. Mm -hmm. And then in the second map of the second BO3, Todd lags out, yeah. and then Stan comes in. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, so you beat him 2 0 in the upper bracket finals, 16 11 cash, 16 11 nuke. So how does this feel, right? Because they beat you at land not too long ago. Now you're beating them right now in, this, in their marquee event, right? It's their namesake tournament. I mean, that was the only good thing about that. It was their tournament, so, I mean, that's what felt good. So, already are you feeling this impact of Days becoming a part of the roster? Because this, this mm. is how I want to transition with Days, because he's obviously We've this... We've always really beat them online. Like, I think in the previous seasons, even with the Team Dynamic roster, like, we would beat them once online, they would beat us once online. It's not like, I don't know, they always were beating us. Okay. I would say. That's true. But I'm just curious because I want to like use this event to transition into your next big roster evolution, which okay. is from curse to I by power as an oh well, I guess curse from then denial then I by power, which okay so I'm just gonna have to ask this question about hmm. denial. Did, did what he say was true? Is this no, do you want to contest not even, this? Not even close. Okay, so explain this. We'll just keep it at that. Okay, then we'll leave it at that. Basically, no. for those of you who are curious, denials. They they don't go with denial as a sponsor. They go with I by power. Denial counterclaims that they made all these offers and they still got shut down. Adren saying those offers are BS basically, and so they go with I by power. So we'll just leave it at that. So then you go into this, you, you pick up Days, which first of all was weird because Days ha had this whole drama with Quantic and Complexity with those guys, and then he leaves and goes and play after he tries to build his own denial roster basically yeah uh, that doesn't go well um it just falls apart and so he winds up leaving the team they were actually going to go to land anyway even though they didn't have the best season but him leaving yeah. kind of kills that oh yeah that's what happened that's right yeah because he left and it just fell apart well and then, we actually when uh when stan left us after the dream hack event mm -hmm. uh before we actually picked up mosbeck we actually talked to sam and he was actually going to join us, but then he, at the last moment, did it, and that's, that's when we went with Mosbeck. Yeah. So then he he goes to play Call of Duty on Xbox for a while, and that doesn't go well, or doesn't go as well as, it uh, doesn't go well enough, and I guess he gets intrigued by this DreamHack Winter event being announced, and he's seeing the changes he wants to see to the game. So my point is here is that this is really weird, though, to like the outside person, because Dazed always seemed to be the rival to you guys, even since the Source days. 
I mean, he never played with you guys and Soros. He always played against yeah. you. And then he's been your rival in Go, too, because he's part of this Area 51 lineup. He's part of this Quantic lineup. He's he's your rival, right? And I almost felt like there was a point in time there was, like, bad blood between you guys in days. I don't, so I don't know if that's uh, true or not. I, mean, I, I don't know. It's just competition. I want to win. Sam wants to win. Trash talking ensues. But at, the, at the end of the day, yeah, you know, it's just a game. So... So yeah, so yeah, trash talking and rivalry aside, you're still all good players and still want to win. And Dazed is a really attractive pickup, is I guess the point I'm trying to make. Hey. Shout out to whoever. I forgot you can hear me. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> anyway, so so walk us through this pickup of Dazed and, and how he's had a change on your team so far, maybe. And then we'll, we'll go with the DreamHack winner. So wait, who stepped down for us again? Stan. Stan again? Okay, so yeah, Stan. Well, I don't, twice. well, actually, yeah, we were playing with like Stan and Mo just for fill-ins again. Oh, that was well, Stan, for MSI, Stan, right? We actually, wanted to play, we actually pl wanted to play with Stan again. And mm -hmm. then Stan just kind of like brought in Mo because Stan was really good friends with Mo. So we kind of just didn't have a fit, so we played with him for a little bit. But like he wasn't a serious pickup. We never said he was on the team. But uh, yeah, we were just – at this point, we're not having any good results in Go yet. You know, we had bad luck with the Team Dynamic roster. We lost to Quantic and over double, two double overtime. So, at this point, like, me, AZK, and whoever's on the team, like, we just want to win right now. Mm -hmm. So, Days is probably one of the best international players. Yep. So, I mean, it makes sense to, yeah. to get it. I forgot to mention this, actually, and you kind of brought it up already. You, you picked up Mo temporarily for these MSI Beat It qualifiers. And then AZK actually temporarily left you guys, too. Because he was really concerned about going to this event that you guys weren't yeah, necessarily AZK really serious wanted, about. Yeah, AZK wanted to compete internationally, and we weren't, like, positively going to go. He, mm -hmm. he wanted to go to ESWC and MSI beat it. Yeah. At the time, like, we're with Curse. Like, they couldn't do that. Like, they didn't have the resources to do that for us. Right. So we dropped from the ESWC tournament just because it wasn't financially sound. Mm-hmm. Which is an event that Complexity winds up going to mm -hmm. instead. But yeah, so y'all lose ATK for a little bit here too. I think maybe like three or four weeks. It wasn't really that long because uh, he goes to play with the homeless guys. Like <laughs> yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. You had these really weird things that happen with some of your core members that just blow my mm -hmm. mind. And I think he just didn't even talk to you guys for like a week. No, he it just was, straight up. He just straight up emo out for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys got back together on I Buy Power, and now you, you have the yeah. ones you have. So now let's talk DreamHack winner, right? So the preface is DreamHack winner. You guys won the Cole Anniversary Tournament. You beat Cole twice. Out of five maps played, you win four of them. So all of a sudden, you, people are riding the I Buy Power hype train going into this. <laughs> let's, let's be real here. Everybody, yeah, was... almost everyone was like, yeah. I buy power is going to dominate this event. I buy power is North America's best chance. It's like everybody hopped off Complexity's train that they were on for the last ESCA event. And yeah. Because not only did they lose to you in this event, they also didn't do as hot as they probably would have liked to at the ESWC 2013 event. Mm -hmm. And so it was almost like a bunch of North American fans that were on the fence between who they wanted to root for was now like hopping on board I buy power for the most part. So then we go to DreamHack winner, and you guys, I've, all teams keep their boot camp secreted, let's be real. So yeah. no one really knew who you played, no one really knew what your scrim results were. So I'm asking you just like I asked Sean, now that we can reflect on it, it's over, how did your boot camp really go? Our boot camps went like extremely well in the summer. In the summer we were beating like everybody with Stan, like we were feeling really confident having a lot of success, getting our strats down, making sure everything was good. And the same was for same case for the winter event. We had like a very successful boot camp, played the best teams, did really well against them, extremely well. And then just come land, just everything, I don't know. It's really disappointing. Let's talk about it then. So your boot camp went really well. I mean, can you talk about like how were your scrim results? Like who were you beating? Who were you losing to at the boot camp? Or do you not want to say even still to this day? That's fine if you don't. I'm just curious. Like, how I mean, we beat were. everybody that we played, but I don't know. Okay. I mean, we pretty much played everyone. Astana, we beat them many times, like four out of five maps, very games. I don't think we played Nip because. Nip was no, we were in Nip's group. We were in Nip's yeah, group. Nip yeah. wasn't gonna so play. Nip was the only team we didn't play. But every other team, you know, it's either we went one one to one maps or we just completely crushed them. Gotcha. 
So, how was the relationship with Complexity at this event? Were you guys, like, all cool, like, hanging out at all? Or, like, were y'all, like, just pretty much separate boot camps that never really intermingled? I was always curious well, about that. There was, there was a couple times where we were at the same Inferno Online, but there was a couple cases where, like, there was another, a brand new Inferno Online that came up, and they would go to that one instead. But there was a co couple times where we were, like, would talk and, I don't know, for a couple minutes here and there between our, our scrims. Okay. Just curious. Because I know yeah. Days is like kind of had like a rough break with the complexity lineup, and then he's with you well, guys. No, they're, they're good. They're, they're good, good now. Yeah. That's cool. So, Dream Act winner, right? This is like maybe the, the topic, the sore topic. So, it's the biggest event for CSGO. Yep. You guys are first up the bat for North America. And like I told Sean, you guys kind of struck out, right? So, you go to D2, yeah. which is a map that historically you're pretty good on, with the exception of maybe that one time you got beat pretty bad by complexity at the last land for ESEA. Otherwise, you as a player, you as a core three, being you, AZK, and Anger, have always been a solid Dust 2 team ever since Source days. So, this is theoretical. And you're playing Universal Soldiers, a team that Quantic was able to beat at the ESEA land. Um, 2-0 actually to get to the grand final of the NIP. So this is like if you're going to play a European team as a North American, this is like one of the teams that you have a, be a good chance of beating, even though yeah. they apparently were doing really well in their own boot camp at this point. It's a 16-9 to 9 score. I'll give you like how I viewed it because I watched it, right? I stayed up late to watch these games. Yeah. And then you can tell me what you thought happened so we can kind of compare. So the way I saw it was is you lost Pistol. And so that's already like... No, we won Pistol. You won? Or did you get Ecoed then? Something weird yes. happened early. You got Ecoed. We lost second round. Okay. And I don't know why, but I think that just like killed us internally. <laughs> Y'all <laughs> were T-side like, first. We were right? on such a high from winning the Pistol round, and then we lose a, a shitty Eco. Yep. And Y'all were on T-side first. That was really the story of the that event for us, is right. we lost every Eco round. I think we lost three Ecos against them that, that match alone. So then it goes down to gun rounds, right? And Skadoodle's op actually not too shabby right now. He's hitting picks, like, he's hitting picks. And Daze is playing as you would expect, right? He's always been really solid online and on land. But Anger's not having a good first half at all. He winds up doing pretty well second half on CT side. But first half T side, he's just not being that impact fragger that you would expect him to be. Like you said, you're the support role. You're trying to set up Anger and AZK, and they just weren't hitting their shots, it seemed like, to me. But maybe you can talk us through this map a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't do that hot on the Terra side Dust 2. I started off pretty sloppy. I remember actually uh, peeking back of B. I, w I was doing this, like, the main thing in boot camp we were focusing on is what we're doing in the scrims is what we're going to do in the match, you know? So... And what I was doing in the scrims was peeking into B a lot, getting information, and f for some reason I, I did not expect. I think it was Neo that was opping back plat. He opted me twice back plat, and I just did not expect them to have an op in the back plat. They had they ran like two ops or something, and that took me off guard in B. So I mean I messed up two rounds there in B tunnels by dying, but I don't know. We just so lost the anti ecos is really the story of that match. So do you want to? talk any more about this one or it's just you lost like straight up and no well what happened is they did so well on their CT side like a 10-5 mm -hmm. that they're they had like so many rounds to work with on Terra side that they just completely YOLO'd their first pistol round and their first gun round and it gambled and just worked out yeah. like I don't know if they thought they had to do risky strats to beat us mm -hmm. but I mean they risked a lot on their pistol, their pistol round was just a straight B rush just a non-stop B rush, and it just worked. Because I don't know if they ha got some inside info or something, but we didn't play B. We didn't play for the rush, and they got the site freely. La di da, they planted one. Yeah. And then the first gun round of, the first gun round, like they risk just to rush B, instantly rush B. That like that that's their first gun round strat, and it's because they're already up thirteen, you know, thirteen to five. So they have rounds to work with and fuck around with. So their first gun round is just a YOLO into B, and it ends up working. And at that point, it's four, you know, it's fifteen five, and that's our first gun round on CT side. Yeah, and actually, you guys put up a fight. You won four rounds. Yeah, uh, four in a row. But Anger I mean, did really point, well at B. Um, things look like we might see like a miracle or something, but this didn't happen. So then you go 
on the play recursive. So this is Kenny S's roster that he kind of joins after he leaves Barry Games. Uh, he was on another French team for a little bit, and like him and Apex, and I can't really remember that too well. Uh, we got game, but they become recursive. They get sponsored by this recursive organization before the event starts to get funding to be able to go. And you guys play them on Inferno, which once again is a weird map because it seems like a strong map for you guys in the past. Like you've done well on it against Epsilon yeah. in previous events. Days has always been pretty good on it as a strat caller. So this theoretically, I mean, besides Kenny S being a dominant player, this seems like a map you should be a group match you should be able to win. But you wind up losing at 16-8. to eight. So what, what happens here, man? Because this was a really confusing match to watch. I don't know. I remember these best-of-one matches are really just, you know, pissing me off. <laughs> 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 yeah, because there's so many little details that that just happen. Like, on Dust 2, they got to just they YOLO'd into B twice. Like, no one's ever going to do that. And, like, I wouldn't assume no one would ever risk that in a big match like that. Like they can just completely just went balls in on those rounds. And I like your. Uh, let's go. Like as a strat caller, how I don't know. I just it boggles me. But uh, e even on the Terra side of Inferno against Kenny S's team, the first gun round or the first pistol we went B and they double mollied us, and uh, that's how that match started, and we lost the pistol. Right on. But I don't remember too much about the the Terra side Inferno. I just I remember it being like depressing as like a North American fan because yeah, cause you guys were up first and not only did you guys not do well, um, we also were like, well, damn, if I have power is doing this bad, like how good is complexity <laughs> going to be able to do? Of course, they wound up taking third, I don't know. fourth place the yeah. whole event. So I don't know if we really underestimated well. these two teams because I don't know. Maybe we just didn't see them as threats and they just kind of sh shocked us. I don't know. They played really well, though. I mean, they just – we went B, and they double mollied us. And we just lost a pistol round, and – Kenny S was opping, so we didn't do any arch strats. We decided not to do any arch strats. And we focused more on, like, porch and apps, and maybe that maybe that hurt us. Yeah. So let's do this roller coaster out of your career, right? So Counter-Strike Source, really good. <laughs> CS go, you start a little bit of a decline. Not not, too, luck. not not bad of a decline. I mean, you're still doing well, but you're not that clear number one team in North America anymore. Now you have these 1.6 guys that are contending against you pretty well, and they're, they're actually beating you. So you're, like, taking second, third places now instead of first. Yeah. And then it gets to a point where then the international lands start coming to ESCA, and now you have that one or, or so European teams that are taking first place, and then – Cole's taking second now and now, so you guys are like third, fourth. In fact, I think Cursed outplaced you at the season the team 13 dynamic. land. Yeah. Um, so basically, the CSGO is just not going well for you on land for sure. Online, your teams are, like, when you play with Cursed, you guys went undefeated. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're, and then you go into ESN season 14 land, and it just doesn't go I mean, well. Yeah, it's just completely different. Like, we played. I mean, on the, the season that we went undefeated, we played Cole Nip Cole. Like, during the yeah. regular season, you're playing, like, a Mouse Spaz, you know, a, a Dynamo or whatever. So yeah, it's and that's the different. big that's the big thing we've been taught when I even talked about with Sean. People don't realize that. We, we are actually, like, me and him were curious to see how you will do against other North American teams on land because we haven't seen it yet, mm -hmm. right? Like, because we haven't, you, like, yeah, yeah exactly. you haven't got to because you played Nip and Cole. That was it. Like, that's your, that and was even your with only the chances. other team Dynamic roster, we played – very games, games right off the bat. Very games and Quantic. Quantic right off the bat. So I don't know. You're literally playing the, the top European team and then the other top North American team. That's all yeah. you get to play against. I would I would definitely say we're not playing bad on land, but we're not playing, you know, as good as we'd like, I guess. It the results seems, that we'd like. From an outside perspective, it seems like your players just aren't as dominant on land as they are, like when we see them play on a regular basis. So my point would be, like, anger, I don't know. Right? I would say that's untrue. Uh, it, it's untrue to an extent because in Season 14, Land Anger does really damn well. Like, he has the best event of his life in Season yeah, 14. I think he might have dropped a 40 on Nip. Yeah, he was uh, spectacular. So yeah. we're expecting to see this again at DreamHack Winter, and we just didn't. I think that's what people have – I think that's where the criticism comes from is – we see Anger go beast on, on land, season 14 ESCA land. You go into the complexity tournament, you win that handedly, and then it's DreamHack winner, and then all of a sudden, like, 
he doesn't necessarily and you can't mm -hmm. expect a guy to show up every time. I, I don't I even know that. what the problem is still. <laughs> yeah, so as a player in the team, I don't even know what the difference is between our online play and our land play because yeah. that's one of the main thing we focus on in our boot camp. It's like like we we would call someone out, we would be like, Would you do that in the match? Like if Todd ran out long A on Dust Two, like Sam would call him out and he'd be like, Todd, what the fuck? You just running out long A Dust Two, are you gonna do that in a match? And we would make sure that like we're playing disciplined and we're making plays that we'd only play on LAN. And and don't take this as me pointing out one player on your team. I used anger as an example. So my point was is that you guys potential, but you're you don't you're not always hitting your peaks at the same time. So you have a game where anger goes off and maybe you're not playing as well as you normally would. But then yeah. you have games where anger is off and you're playing decent. So it's like if all you guys could hit your peak at the same time, you'd probably be perfectly fine. But it yeah. just seems like when I watch you guys play, you know, Dace typically always does really well. Skadoodle usually does pretty well with the op. And then it's like you other three have your moments, but you also have, like, your, like, duds, basically. So the question mm -hmm. is then is – where do you guys go from here? Because you're going to ESCA land. That's your next event. It's, it's not even that far away. It's like next weekend. And so far, I mean, in the online results, you guys have beaten Mousepaz handedly, which is one of the other teams going there. And yeah. then you've beat Homeless on Nuke, but you've lost to Complexity and Homeless. Oh, you beat you lost to Complexity on I think D2. we beat Complexity, didn't we? You, you uh, no, you, they beat you on D2 this season. Oh, they beat and us then on you, D2, Then you right. took a forfeit loss on Nuke for some reason. I'm not sure what that was about. Is it because power went out? And then you, um, Homeless, you lost to them on Inferno in, like, an overtime. And I, I didn't add in the United 5 results, but I know they beat you recently on Mirage, which is, like, Mirage just seems to be your guys' kryptonite. Um, so what can we expect from you guys? I mean, you had a bad DreamHack winner, let's be real, but you guys obviously are hungry to, to prove yourselves. Does it happen at this event? Do you guys feel better right now? How do you feel? Uh, oh, I don't think anyone feels like too comfortable with their practice right now since the holidays, and literally no invite teams are playing. So it's it's quite tough to get like a really good practice right now. But I don't know. I don't think we're looking into too much into our losses because I don't know. <laughs> It's just hard to map you guys, I think, yeah. as, a, as a commentator because you show so much potential, but then you have a, an event like DreamHack Winter where you underperform like at the highest level, basically. And I say at the highest level because it's like the biggest event we've ever had, and it's like where you yeah, need – Yeah, trust me. When you guys yeah. – when yeah. everyone's like watching and i disappointed, trust me, we are two times as disappointed in ourselves because we had such good boot camps and like everything was set. Like we were ready to be top four easily. And I definitely think we had the potential. It's just like, I, yeah, things are just not are just not going our way and go. They're they're really not, man. It, I, it, I don't. Know. I think you're it, man. Because Days did just fine before we played with you guys. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Anyway, so <laughs> I think what it's boiling down to it. And you guys, by the way, I'm about to open up chats where you guys can ask questions. So don't ask them just yet, but you can just a moment, and I'll ask them. Um, I'm trying to figure out. I mean, is your roster stable at this point? Can you comment on that? Because I think a lot of people were worried that Days might leave after such a poor DreamHack winter performance, and obviously he's still with you guys. So is there any worry that your roster could fall apart with a poor performance at this ESCA land? Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't think there's any problems within the team right now. I think it's stable. I mean, we'd obviously like a good performance, but if we lose – I'm not. I'm not gonna leave if we lose. Like that's for sure. And I don't think Todd would. I don't think Todd would leave or Skadoodle. I mean, Sam could leave, but he showed no signs of wanting to leave. You know what I mean? So I think it's all good in the neighborhood. So I'm gonna conclude with like two points. So my first point is I see three scenarios here for ESCA land, right? So scenario one would be you guys win it. Or you guys at least take second place over complexity, but maybe you lose the various games again or something. Uh, but basically, it's either like you win or you take the best North American placing, which would theoretically s maybe s silence some of these naysayers, right? Because you actually perform well on land, maybe you beat complexity too, and so that's like really huge for you guys. So there there's that. And then there's 
you know, you still lose to Complexity in various games, but you're beating all the other North American teams. So basically, you're still not doing as well as you'd like, but you're at least mm. proving that you're the clear second best North American team underneath Complexity. Or you have the third scenario where you guys tank and you do <laughs> really, would really fast. Ever. <laughs> so right, we just stack the shit on the shit. Pile, right. You know what I mean? So I think in scenario three, if you guys tank this event. I don't know what's going to happen. I think the negativity is going to be just really huge at that point from a spectator's perspective, maybe inner clan turmoil perspective. Who knows? I would say if we don't make top two, we're still going to get a lot of, of flack. So. Yeah, I, I think if you took third place, it, it would still be flack, but at least people would say, well, they're clearly second best, right? They're clearly yeah. right below complexity. Whereas... I, mean, I would have to say, yeah, complexity is definitely number one right now. They've been... Their DreamHack performance was yeah. r really solid. Because here's my thing. So Complexity's history against Varia Games is actually really good. It seems like that's the it one actually, team yeah. that... They got, it seems like they have their number. Yeah, so they beat them at DreamHack winner in groups, and then they also, the, the Quantic roster 2 0 them at the Season 13 ESCA land. So like yeah. that like group of people, like Hiko, Symphys, like they're, they have Varia Games' number. You guys, yeah. on the other hand, can't seem to beat them. Like You took one map off of them at the Season 13 land, so that was like a step in the right direction. But, I mean, Days had success against them on Quantic, 2 0 them, and then he had success against them in Source uh, at one point, I think. Mm, I don't think so. Maybe that was just Steel and Mo and that group of guys. Maybe well, the Days first time we played Vary Games in Source, we took two maps off of them. Because it was like a best of. We five? took three maps off of them. Because it was like a best of five. Yeah, DS Rack. Yeah. So. But in yeah. Go, you got. In Go, Vary Games seems to have your number when you've played them, but it's been a while. Right. Yeah, it's been a while. Let's cop calling them Vary Games. They're Titan Esports, by the way. All right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I, but I just wanted to like make that, I guess, segue. But anyway, so, so I think when you go to this event, like I said, there's these three scenarios that could happen. So if scenario three happens, you guys tank. The negativity is just going to be overwhelming, mm -hmm. right? If you I guys think if we tank, yeah, you know, that's not going to be good for the roster. No, it's not going to be good for North American CS:GO if you guys tank. So then there's the other option where, honestly, I feel even to this point, because I haven't seen you and Cole play yet on land, so it's really hard to determine, like, who's best. I guess people would think Complexity's best, and they I guess they deserve that because they did so well at DreamHack Winter, and they just seem to be playing really well right now. Um, theoretically, though, it seems like it wouldn't be surprising no matter who wins that matchup. Like, no one's going to be just completely shocked if you guys beat Cole. And no one's going to be yeah. completely shocked if Cole beats you guys. So it's almost like you guys are interchangeable to an extent. So I don't think it would be any more negative than it already is if you guys lost to Cole in very games. Yeah, I think right now, like, because the last time we played them on land, we won 2-0, we won and then they came back and beat us 2-0. But, I mean, right now they have the respect of being the better team because they've placed a lot better than us in – you know, the events that they have attended. Right. So, basically, my point is here is that if you guys can beat Complexity or very, if you can just beat one of those two teams at some point in time during the event, I think you guys would have some positive momentum at least. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you get shut out by both, I mean, it's still not horrible, but it's still not what you would want. But if you, if you just tank, then that sucks for everyone, right? So, basically, yeah. what I'm telling you to do is don't throw... <laughs> you guys need to win at least one of those matches. Maybe you can win the whole event, and all of a sudden you guys are looking really good, right? So, Maybe. So then the last point I want to make then is, like, what is the future of your team? Obviously, it's, like, unsure because it depends on how well you do at ESCA land maybe determines a lot of things. Um, but obviously this $250,000 tournament has been announced again in March. I, I, you haven't been directly invited yet, but is that at least an event you guys are interested in figuring out a way to get to if things go well at ESCA? Well, we really haven't talked about it too much. I'm not even sure how the qualifiers are working for other North America teams because I think Complexity already got an invite for being top eight yeah. at DreamHack. All top eight teams did, yeah. So all top eight teams did, but I don't really know how they're inviting the other teams. So. It's really weird because... We really haven't even talked about it. They have all these European qualifiers that you can seed through, Yeah. but there doesn't seem to be anything for North America. I, I heard there was one more invite reserved for either an Asian or American team, but that hasn't been announced yet, like who got that invite or if anybody has yet. But then there's all these yeah. European announcements for like France and Sweden and the Nordic and stuff, so it's really confusing. I'm not really sure if it's even 
impossible for you guys to qualify unless you get invited, unless they announce something later on down the road. But my point is, is I guess my question would just be, is like, is, does, is your, how much does your future hinge on ESCA land? Mm, I would say our roster is in good shape. I mean, the core of our roster is not going to dis disband if we do bad at this land, that's for sure. Okay. So my question is, is how do you think you'll do at this land? That's going to be my last question, then I'll turn to chat. So chat, you can start asking questions, by the way. I'll start Top three. Track. You think top three? Top three, yeah. I mean, how much, like, practice. how's practice going? You said practice has been pretty bad because of holiday. That's, like, everyone. Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, like, there was, yeah, we didn't play for, like, three weeks there. Just because Christmas, New Year's. I don't, I don't think anybody was playing. So it's not like Complexity was playing and we were just off, you know. Oh, yeah, you're right. Having, you know, holiday fun. So you guys practicing so. now, though? Like, has practice started for ESCA land? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's next weekend. So okay. we've been trying to get as many scrims as we can at night. So. Yeah. Also, while I'm waiting for, like I said, chat, you guys can ask questions now. But while I'm waiting for questions to pop up, just want to go ahead and like uh, give you a shout out, basically, because you're probably one of the most helpful to the community from the North American pros. You actually got like kudos on Reddit today. Yeah. Uh, for all your Saw tip that. videos on YouTube, uh, which yeah. are really great. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, people can learn a lot from those. So definitely check it out. I think the URL is still CurseCS on YouTube. Uh, yep, youtube.com slash curse cs. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, also, of course, you can follow Adren. His name is right below the camera, at Hoaxda on Twitter. Uh, you also check him out. I think it's Eric Adren Hoag on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you can follow I Buy Power on Facebook and Twitter as well. Uh, and, of course, the biggest thing is, is your streaming, man. So um, you got your sub button not too long ago. Yep. You got the icons. People are actually throwing some of them up in chat at times. <laughs> I got my famous one out oh, yeah. myself, the Adren Dust, man, the bowl. Anyway, so, I mean, that's – that's. I, I think you were, you kind of had the market for a while by yourself because it would seem like you were the main one doing it on a regular basis. But now recently, Kiko and nothing have really yeah, been – Yeah, streaming is definitely – I mean, streaming was blowing up when I started streaming, and I was like the only one streaming scrims for a while. But, yeah, now streaming is really big. It seems like they're giving away sub buttons for free. Well, don't get me wrong, like, nothing... <laughs> I is think e everyone and their mother has a sub button now. <laughs> I don't have a sub button, damn it. Well, because I'm irrelevant, but... I'm just saying, everyone The point, got one. Shazam got one, which I thought was weird, because he only pulls... I mean, he, he, I've seen him pull over a 1,000, but it he seems like most... He streams consistently, but yeah, yeah he, usually his average is like 50. Uh, 150, yeah, and then... But he's gotten over a 1,000 sometimes, so who knows? Mo seems to average over a 1,000... Hiko has been doing good, yeah. Hiko is doing ridiculously well for himself. Yeah. He's getting like I think Hiko games. got a lot of respect from the DreamHack winner. Yeah. And then nothing obviously is doing ridiculously yeah. well. Yeah, nothing's always been popular. And then so it's like you and Anger are doing okay. Days streams on occasion. Like I like everybody on your team streams on occasion except Skadoodle. I don't know what the hell he's doing. He streamed right. he did stream for a bit and he was like, "Nah, I'm over it, I guess." <laughs> and then very little. And then all of he complexity like a jump map. Yeah. And then all of complexity streams sent, except for Sean. And or then swag. uh Swag actually has been streaming lately. Has he? 10 mans like late yeah. at night. And then of course you got like Mo and Shazam and then the Emmy Clips guy. I want to give him a shot cuz he's been streaming since before any of you guys actually. Yeah, he's been doing he doesn't have a sub button. Presently, yet, he doesn't have a sub button. We he, have and like, he, he averages around five hundred. Yeah. He's losing a lot of his audience though to some of you guys. Like he I would say he averages five hundred. I would say he averages like two. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool guy though. Yeah. Okay. So this is, I did get a question in chat. But I was like, keep asking your questions in chat. Uh. I'm trying to find just some of the best ones. Someone asked if there's any plans for a team house, and that's probably like a no, right? Okay, so there that was easy. <laughs> Trying to filter through some of these easier <laughs> questions. So this is actually a really good question. I've always wanted this myself. It comes from the Amplify. He says, "Why do you guys never scrim Cole, or does Cole refuse to scrim against you guys? What's the deal? I've always wondered this. You guys do never scrim each other. Why is that? I mean, we plan on facing each other at LAN. But so what about like, before DreamHack Winter? Like you know, before DreamHack Winter, we scrimmed against each other. Okay. We were even we were even gonna practice against each other on at uh, at the event. You know." I mean, at the boot camp, we planned on playing BO3s against each other because we wanted to play against each other. But we already play against each other so much here in North America that we found it pointless to boot camp against each other in Europe. Like, we'd rather play European talent, you know? But yeah, like, obviously right now, we're not going to be playing Complexity. 
because it would be pointless. We're not going to run our set shit, and they're not going to run their set shit. So why practice? So when we can play someone else and run our real stuff and actually, you know, get real practice because we plan on playing complexity at the tournament. Gotcha. So, is there any domestic lands that you guys are attending? That's like another question I'm kind of got. Like, are y'all thinking about maybe like an ETS or? Yes, for sure. What about Fragdelphia yeah. or whatever? Mm. Have you heard about that I've, event? No, I haven't really heard about it. Uh, first prize is actually twenty five hundred bucks, so it's like a pretty reasonable domestic land, I guess. But like your whole roster is going to ETS. Uh, as of right now, I think it's me, AZK, Skidoodle, and Todd. Not sure about your fifth, though. Uh, I don't think Sam will fly from California for ETS. Yeah, you might be right on that. So, uh, the, 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 I'm trying to see if there's any more questions. So far, I'm not really getting any, to be honest. Uh, what was I going to say? So, okay, so this is a good question that comes in from Sav. He was asking... You know, obviously, like, you and Complexity are kind of, like, top two, I guess, in most people's uh -huh. eyes. What other North American team do you see out there besides y'all two that you think is solid or could be, like, an international contender-type team? I would say Homeless is uh, the third-best team, for sure. So what do you have, Mouse Spaz, U5, and Homeless? Yes. Homeless is definitely the best out of those three. What roster are they bringing, though? I'm confused. It is Frost... Steel, Monty, Mosbeck, and a fifth. Oh, Freakazoid. It's Freakazoid, yeah. So yeah, I def I I think they're they're the top. I just out always of found it weird how they get constructive practice with steel schedule being in Europe. That's yeah, really it's, it's it's insane. A lot of people are hyping up U five, even though they barely qualified for this event. I don't know if they're practicing event. or not. I heard they. I mean, they're are obviously good. Wow, okay. I heard that at least three or four of their well, players are good landing players, right but now. I don't know if they have it still. You know what I mean? I heard they're, like I said, I heard three of them or four of them are landing right now. Like, as we're Pretty talking. Pretty sure they all live in, like, Dallas or something. Or Sev Texas. Like, I think two or three of them live in the state of Texas. Not really sure where. Yeah. I think TM's, like, the only one not there yet. I mean, but I just don't see them beating complexity or very games. You know what I mean? Like, they could definitely beat. Like, U5 could definitely beat Mouse Baz or Homeless, but I don't know. They'd have to really, because these are all BO3s played. They could definitely take maps off teams for sure. I don't yeah, know. I'm just, curious, because Mouse Baz is the third seed, and they've done pretty well online. So, they actually, like, I think it was the NA Revival Tournament, even though, like, none of the other invite teams are really in it, except for maybe Dynamo or something. Um... See, so yeah, I'm kind of curious uh, how Mouse Baz will do. Actually, guys, just to let you know, I'm pretty sure the third episode of The Hype, I'm not sure when it'll be. It's going to be either Sunday or sometime next week. I'm actually going to be talking with Mouse Baz because they're the third seed going to the event. So I'm just kind of continuing the pattern of talking to the North American ESEA land teams for the most part. I'm trying to talk to Homeless and U5, but none of them will get back to me. So they're kind of being lame, but we'll see if they get back with me. Uh, either way... Another question comes in for Adrian. After playing this game for so long, do you still just play for the love of the game, or is it more for money? Uh, hopefully well, it's not for money. If I'm playing for not, the money, you're I'm, not in the, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I make about, you know, <laughs> on streaming I make about, you know, a hamburger and a half from McDonald's an hour in terms of ad <laughs> revenue. So I can eat at night. But, I mean, I still like the game a lot. I actually like streaming a lot and just playing for fun and fucking around in matchmaking or just pugging. You know, in terms of competition, it is a little bit lackluster in NA. It's really hard to get on every night, you know, 8 to 12 or 8 to 1 and actually dry run in a server and actually, like, still be serious after so many years when there's not even that much competition in North America. So. Dust? I hear you. No, I was just waiting oh. for you to answer. I was looking to see if there's any more questions, but I'm not really seeing any. So uh, the show's been going on right now for about, I guess, an hour and 20 minutes. So uh, I don't want to keep holding you up because uh, you might go back to streaming, right, or something like that maybe? Or are you nah, done for the my, day? my girlfriend's here. Okay, cool. Well, basically, Adrian, this is your chance to throw out all your shit, your shout-outs, uh, advertise your stuff as well to these people that are here. Um I think they're mostly your viewers anyway, but maybe you can uh, you know, give your shout-outs and stuff like that. Oh, uh, just Thorin said, NA teams only care about skills on building rosters. 
Not really. I mean, that's not what we've been looking at. I mean, that's that's what we did when we picked up Freakazoid like two years ago or something. But it's definitely not something you obviously have to have skill. But like team teamwork is definitely we obviously the top North American teams obviously know <laughs> what they're doing. Maybe the lower tier invite teams look at just skill and just be like, oh, we gotta pick this guy up and get him on our team. But no. But yeah, just follow me on my Twitter at Hogsta, Facebook Eric Adren Hogue. Twitch, Adren underscore TV. Thanks to I Buy Power for sponsoring us. There you go. Uh, wait, I had a couple more questions just really quick, so I'll just ask them really fast. Who do you think is the most underrated player in North America? Underrated? Hmm. I don't know. I would need a list of names and I could pick one. <laughs> I don't have one off the top of my head that's like nuts either. that no one thinks about. I feel... This is going to sound weird. I feel like Kiko gets super underrated because he gets overshadowed by like the whole nothing swag deal. But he's actually a really good player. I don't know. I think, he, I think now getting a lot of hype right now. He's getting hype now, yeah. But yeah, back he's getting in the hype day, now. he wasn't. And I felt like he yeah. was underrated. I think that, jeez, I don't know. Hmm. That's tough. I, You I know what's I weird? I think, I don't think TM's kind hype, of underrated either. for a player that hasn't played Counter-Strike until now. And he's actually doing pretty well with United 5. So maybe you could say he's kind of underrated. I don't know. That's I don't know. Hard. There's probably not enough competitions, events, to even know who's an upcoming underrated player. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And also, another question Right is... now, you have us in complexity going to events. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say any of us are, like, underrated because we've all been around for so long. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so last question before I let you go, and then you can do your shout-outs again, is uh, do you think there's still any more changes that need to be made to CSGO as far as, like, big changes? Um, and then someone just asked, what do you think the NAC needs to get better? So maybe you can just feel More events. Questions. More – well, ESCA is obviously doing a good job having an event every four months. But other than that event every four months, like, we have nothing to do here. Even when we need online events, Complexity's event was awesome. It like got all the top competition together, and you know you played during the weekend, and it just brought more competition. If we could have events just like that, you know, like 5K events, just like $5,000, just online. Not even, not you don't even necessarily need LAN events, but just events in general. And then, do you think there's any more major changes that need to happen to CS:GO, like movement-wise, uh, maybe, or guns-wise, or just anything like that? I think aim punching when have armor should be taken out of the game because that's the whole point of buying armor. You shouldn't get aim punched, but you should still get aim punched if you ha don't have armor. And then they, I think peeking is still too fast in this game because there's so many times where a dumb player will just keep re-peeking and re-peeking and re-peeking and you don't get punished for it in this game because you can't wall the wall to kill him if he's there just sitting on the edge of the wall. and. You, you peek so fast that you're at a, a super advantage being the one peeking. You have a more of a peeker's advantage in this game than you do in Source, and I don't know, that, that really frustrates me when someone can just peek five times and not die. But, I hear yeah. Alright, so... And I think the op needs some changes. I think it needs... Less blur? Uh, I think it needs changed. More consistency. I hear you. Well, other than that, man, uh, I guess do lash outs again. I'll actually just like go ahead and post some of these links for you, like while you're doing your shout outs, to make it easier for these people to follow uh, if they haven't already. So I'm just gonna post those links now. But go ahead and give your lash shout outs again, I guess. Um, I'm good. I'll you're I'll good? type in the chat. Yeah, so I put your Twitter out there already. Um, right. I'll put your Twitch out there too. Put your YouTube out. We'll, we'll teamwork here. <laughs> Oh shit! You can't stop. Oh. <laughs> Later. Late. Now you can. You can now. Wait, are you still back? <laughs> Hold on, let me fix that. Hold on. Late. Later, dude. All right, I unbanned you. You should be good now. Now you can. Now you can go crazy with your links. Oh, shit. <laughs> go go nuts, dude. Go nuts. Anyway, so while Adren's posting all his links in chat, which I've already posted his Twitter and his Twitch, definitely give him a follow. Definitely a huge shout-out to this guy for taking time out of his day to come talk to me and, and to give the community, uh, you know, a different take on what's going on in, in North American CS and CS in general. I really appreciate all of you for tuning in. I think we capped out at around 90 viewers at one point. 
this is still new, so it's still growing. Uh, but the VOD, actually, the last VOD's up to 1,000 hits right now on YouTube, so maybe that this VOD will also do pretty well for itself. Uh, of course, the VOD of this talk show, if you missed any part of it or if you want to watch it again or if you want to hopefully share it and spread the word, uh, definitely just uh, follow up. I've posted my links in chat. You can follow up the YouTube uh, and also I'll go ahead and do the playlist as well. So I have a playlist of just the hype episodes only on YouTube. And that link is posted in the chat as well. That's where you can basically find the VOD. You can also find it on the Twitch highlights. I'll make a highlight as well. Also, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I do post uh, what, I'm do what I'm doing. And uh, I have a Steam group as well that you can follow if you want to get alerted on Steam when I'm doing stuff. But basically, I'm about to let Adrin go. I'm going to stay on for probably like another hour and play some games if you guys want to hang out and ask more questions to me. But other than that, I do want to thank Adrin for, tuning in, for coming in and helping me out. And I uh, want to give him a shout out and, uh, and bid him adieu so he can hang out with his girlfriend. I know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for having me on here. Thanks for coming, man. Have a good night. You too.